Well, hello, everybody. Um, today, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. It's raining like the dickens out there right now, so figure what better way to do anything on a rainy day than craft, right? Um, I was going through my Pinterest boards, and I found one of my pins that um, was called, uh, that I pinned for homemade salt dough. And um, so I figured I'd give it a try. Um, somebody had sent this to me, and I apologize if you're watching and I didn't remember who it was. But these were made out of either clay or um, salt dough. And uh, they sent me, you know, this packet. It was in one of my Happy Mails. So I thought I would love to try to do something like that. And uh, for a first try, I didn't want to use up my Sculpey clay. So I figured I'd try the salt dough. Now... How you make it is it's a half a cup of salt, one cup of flour, and a half a cup of warm water. Now, when I went to mix it, um, it always it seems like there's not enough water when you're mixing it with a spoon. But when I got in there and did it with my hands, it incorporated a lot better. So just keep that in mind. Now we're going to set that off to the side. Actually, I'm only going to pull a chunk of this off. <clears throat> I don't, well, I might. Let me see. I've been trying to find something small to cut out circles, so I found my smallest biscuit cutter. Alright, so we're going to roll this out. We're going to see how it works. Wondering if I shouldn't have put some wax paper or something down. Hopefully it won't stick to my glass mat. It didn't stick that time, so let's just see. I don't want to make these too thick because I thought what perfect way to embellish, you know, pocket letters or um, another thing I'm doing, I'm making mini stuffed envelopes, which I'm going to do a video on for those, too. <sighs> okay. Now, I believe that's about maybe a quarter of an inch thick. So, let's set this aside. And what I'm going to do first is I have this, uh, it's like an 8 by 10 it's a whole stamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some purple. And I'm just going to start inking this up. Now, I've never done this before, so I really, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I hope it does because, you know, the picture you have in your mind is a whole lot better than the one that actually comes out half the time. Now, I wouldn't suggest, if you're doing a piece like this, to use a chalk-based ink. Right now, I'm using a dye-based. It gives you a minute, or not a minute, but it gives you, you know, a little bit longer to get the uh, ink on without it drying up. So let's see what we've got. And what I'm also doing is pressing it in a little bit so that the uh, impression of the stamp will go down into the dough. 
So let's see how that comes out. Pull it up very carefully. Well, the purple didn't show up at all. Well, it was a very light purple as well. And my tweezers. But the impression came out fairly nicely. So let's let's see how this works. All right, so we'll do three of those. Now I'm thinking you don't have a whole lot of time to work with this, but it doesn't seem to be drying out as fast as I thought it might. Also, what I'm going to do is I have a bamboo skewer. I'm going to, oh, wrong side. I'm going to, actually a straw would work a whole lot better. Let me see. There we go. Yeah, because it's got the hole in it and it should. There we go. Pull out the. Yep, much better. Oops, that one didn't come out or didn't pull it out. There we go. Alrighty. So let's see how these will work. Well, those might be a little thick. Now, when you're when they're dry, which you put them in an, a 250 degree oven for about two hours. That's what the that's what the books say. So let's see if I have something to put this on that won't stick too badly. Well, let's just put it right here for now. Put them off to the side and we'll do something else. Obviously that light purple wasn't going to work. So I did bring a darker purple, but I'm not going to use the same stamp. Put this one away. That big one was a little bit difficult to work with. So we'll do something smaller. I grabbed a bunch of stamps, different styles of stamps out. Um, prior to doing this, so I kind of had everything together. Oh, let's roll this out again. roll this one a little bit thinner. I don't know if I'll be able to too much, but I have the the rubber band circles. They're oh, where do we go? The ones that fit on the end and they're different widths and thicknesses that allows you to get like a quarter inch thickness, an eighth inch thickness, you know, that type of thing. But I don't know where they're at right now. <laughs> That would probably be a really good idea to have, but I mean, I have a vague idea. I just didn't feel like going and getting them. Okay, so let's try. Let's try something else. Let's try one of these. Yeah, that ink's a lot darker. So let's see. Oh, that's pretty. OK, 
Okay, since we got the outline on that, let's try and go a little bit easier on the stamp. Maybe wipe off the excess so it doesn't transfer. That's better. All right, so we did the purple. Let's try blue. It's a darker blue. It's called Nautical Blue for Memento. It's one of their dew drops. Oh, that blue is pretty. Let's do another blue. Now I am watching the stamp itself to make sure it's not picking up any, you know, salt dough transfer. That is really pretty. So let's see. This is one of those little medicine dosing cups. It's almost perfect. Okay, so oops, that side's actually that side is split, so I'm going to cut that end off. Give me a little bit more to work with. A little bit better anyway. Hope that one didn't want to pick it up. Okay. Hmm. Whoops. Let's see if this will fit through. Oh, awesome. That skewer will fit right through the, the straw. So, okay. We'll clean that out. Um, let's see if we have... Well, actually, let's kind of get these out of the way. Now, some of the inked I'm going to leave as is, but the ones that where the ink didn't come up, and I'm going to go ahead and just do the, the impressions from stamps. Now, you can also uh, use your letter stamps. I'm not very good at keeping them straight, so I'm not going to worry about that. If I had word stamps, that would be different, and I believe I do somewhere in here. Okay, so we'll put that one off to the side. And you can see, it didn't look like there was very much um, salt dough to begin with. But um, there was quite a bit, because we're getting quite a few out of this one. And I'm not even, you know, making it... I'd say I'm probably rolling the dough out maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch. Not quite an eighth of an inch, but... I like some weight to my projects. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm not going to put any ink on this at all, but I do need to clean the back of my, my cling stamp because it doesn't seem to want to stick very well. There we go. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the, imp I'm going to do an impression. Let's see how that comes out. Oops, that just picked my stamp. Oh, that came out perfect. I wish I could um, oh, zoom it in a little bit more so you can see that. So let's do this one. Oh, I really like that. You know, and after they bake and they get hard, you know, you can take your little paintbrush and paint whatever image you have pressed onto here. Let's see, let's do that one. And oh, what's this? Well, this one is a little bitty one that says just because. And I have no idea how well this is going to work. Ah, now see the stamp is a little bit too big, but that's okay. Put it right over it, press it down. There we go, I got most of it. And that one got most of it. Hmm. Well, that one's kind of pretty. I don't think I'm going to put a hole in it. Let's see if you can see those. They look lopsided or, or like they're leaning, but that's just the way the stamp was. Doesn't that come out nice? Those impressions. And that's just using a stamp you already had. No special equipment. Now, if you had cookie cutters or something like that, you know, you could use these, uh, make these for Christmas ornaments. Um, you can use them tags on gifts. Um, all different kinds of things, which I think are fabulous. All righty. Now, when I roll my stuff out, I always pick it up, flip it, and rotate it. It helps to get a, a more even roll, you know. <sighs> Anyways, let's see what else we have. Okay, we have this one, and I'm not going to ink it. I'm just going to set it right in the middle. And I'm going to press it into the dough. it up. Oh, that came out rather nice. That one did come out really nice. Look at that impression. Okay, what's the other one? There's the other one anyway. 
that's not the one I want. Let me put this one back in here. Oh, phooey, come on. Alright, let's use these. to the side. We'll roll this one out. Now if you really wanted to get even you could take two pencils you know or two skewers on either side and hold it down and then just roll your rolling pin right over it. And that gives you, you know, even, <coughs> excuse me, distribution all the way across. Okay. Let me set this off to the side. And we are going to get this one. And instead of doing the hole, I am just going to press in. I said, I don't know what it's going to look like. And this is my first time, so let's hope it comes out nice. See, now that came out good, and I'm not going to... I'm just going to leave it off to the side and give me a little bit of white space, so to speak. There we go, like that. But... For something as small as that is, it didn't give me a lot of definition. You can kind of see it, so I don't like it. I'm going to, you know, do it again. Maybe do something with that's a little bit smaller, maybe more defined image. And you can just make blank, blank um, cutouts. You don't have to use stamps. Let's see. I'm going to use this one. It's a little bit more defined. You know, and then when, when they're done, just paint them. Or pearl X them. You can use some pearl X, uh, perfect pearls. Um you know, before, you probably put glitter. Now, see, I like that one better. Um, you could probably put glitter on them before. Yeah, see, that works much better. I don't have any perfect pearls, or I would try that, because I would think that would be really pretty. Um, I do have, I do want to try one thing, though, before I pause this to go bake those. Because I'm not going to make you wait two hours. I'll just go bake them and then come back when they're done. Or while they're cooking, we could do something else. To work on more embellishments. I think that might be a good idea. Alrighty, so I've got some chunky glitter. I got, ah, gosh, I believe I got this at Michael's. It's from Recollection. It's called Shredded Glitter. I don't know if you can see that or not. And it's got a little pour spout on the top. So I've not opened it yet. Um, probably just need to pull the top off. I 
I have a brand new X-Acto knife somewhere. I just have no idea where it's at. All right, so we've got the different colors. And I think I really like... And we've got a turquoise, so let's try the turquoise. Wait, let me cut it out first. So that way I don't put glitter in something that I might not want glitter on. So I'm going to sprinkle... Oh, that's pretty. Sprinkle some glitter on there. Oops. And I'm very lightly just spreading it out some. Now something like this might make a good tag for, you know, housewarming party, uh, New Year's Eve thing. Oops. All right. Okay, so that's the last. Yeah, see, this is starting to get dry. So I'm thinking while it's while you're not using the part, yeah, it's starting to get dry. I would take a baby wipe you know, a wet one, and just lay it over the top of it. Oops! Whoops! There goes my glue gun. <laughs> okay. Um, lay it over the top of it to keep it a little bit moist. So let's do that. Well, my baby wipes are still dried out. I put them in a baggie, um, and didn't realize that the baggie had a great big hole in it. So my baby wipes had started to dry out. Alright. I'm just going to wrap this to keep it moist. And I'm going to press... Whoops, the glitter doesn't want to press in. It's coming up on my finger. So maybe the glitter isn't such a great idea. At least not the shredded glitter. I wonder... Since it's sticking to my finger, I wonder if I just press it in this way. That works. Well, that kind of flattened it out a little bit. We'll see. Alright, well, like I said, maybe not the shredded glitter. I'm going to pause this. Go get my cookie sheet, which I should have had ready, and I didn't. I'm going to go get that, and then if I've got room on my cookie sheet, we'll do some more, and we'll try some different kind of glitter, um, and see how that works. I'll clean up my mess, and I will be right back. Okay, so, obviously, I have quite a bit more room on my cookie sheet, so we're going to keep moving on. <clears throat> Clean this up a little bit. I've got my oven preheating, which won't take only maybe six minutes. So, okay. So this is clean, a little bit, <laughs> and let's see, yeah, much better. Yep, for just a, that little bit of time, <sighs> see I'm only taking maybe a plum size, you know, it's not even a tennis ball size. Just a plum size worth of, uh, let me spray this. Okay. Just to keep that dried out, or moist, not wet. As you don't want it wet, it sticks on everything if you get it wet. 
Okay, so maybe you don't want circles. Maybe you want something else. Oh, buoy. I guess that would help if I went and got the something else. I'll be right back. Okay. Ah, oh, these are cookie sheets from, or cookie sheets, cookie cutters from like forever ago. Uh, got leaves, acorns, and some more leaves. Also got candy cane. And snowflake. And a Christmas tree. I'm not going to do the big leaves. I'm just going to do the little ones. And the little acorn. I don't want to do the stars. So, let's just put this here. Okay, so these are other options you can use. Alright, so let's roll this out. Okay. Actually, I think I am going to do the... I'm going to tape my pencils. I can find my tape. There we go. Something really easy. Except I think these are going to be too thick, but we'll see. But you get the idea. I may have to use the bamboo skewers. Yeah, that's not letting me get any thinner. So, leave that there. We will leave that there. And I will get something else that's a little bit thinner. I've got some more bamboo skewers here. That might be a little too thin, but you know, hey. We're having fun, right? I am. I always love trying something new. And if it messes up, then I can tell you, hey, this doesn't work. Don't do this at home. And there we go. Now I'm getting a more even um what do you call it? Thickness. Yeah, that's the ticket. Thickness. All right. So let's go. Acorn. Maple leaf. I believe this is an oak leaf. Oak leaf. Let's try. Let's do a Christmas tree. And since I've got some space, I'll just do a plain circle.
And one more. Okay. Let's pull up the pieces around it. Now, if when they're done baking and you have this little ledge, you see that sticking out right there, right there, you can either trim it now or when it's done and it's gotten hard, just use a nail file. That's what I would use. That's what I always do on my, uh, my sculpies. <clears throat> okay, let me get my cookie sheet. Alrighty, we'll do one more batch and then we will pop these puppies in the oven. I believe I just hit my computer, but that's okay. Not really, but you know. Um, I may have to get some more dough since I'm using bigger, bigger cookie sheet or bigger cutters. <laughs> Let's see, how do we want to do this? Probably right at the top. Alrighty, need a little bit more. Yeah, wrapping it in a baby wiper, you know. I mean, not a soaking wet baby wipe, but a damp baby wipe. Seems to work really well. Keeping it from drying out while you're working with, you know, other... Flip it over and then rotate it. Only a quarter of a turn. That's kind of pretty. And let's give it a hole. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, see, pulling it up wants to... Um, take the shape out, so you got to be really careful about that. And if your cutters, whatever you're using to cut out um, the shapes, uh, the sharper and the more crisp the edges are, the better. As you can see, even, even though I can take my, my nail file to it afterwards, there's some places that a nail file is just finds it hard to get to. So let's do that. Ooh, that'll be pretty um, painted with some silver metallic, maybe some light blue um, glitter dust. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty. Okay, let's do another. Actually, let me wipe this down a little bit. Oops. And yes, wiping it down like this between will probably make it stick more, but uh, there was a lot of dried stuff on the uh, surface, so I wanted to get that done with. I'm going to do, let me see, I can get away with two more um, snowflakes on my cookie sheet, and then... This is also a great project to do with your kids at you know at like the holidays you can even do like Easter eggs and uh, um, you can do hearts um, for Valentine's Day you can do Christmas ornaments you know for the holidays um, leaves and acorns like I've got over here for Thanksgiving And if you have one of those, um, you know, those long razor knives that you use to cut polymer clay, that would probably slide right under there as long as it was really sharp. Because if not, you'll just end up, you know, misshaping your, your piece again. Okay, there we go. And, whoops. Okay, one more. But this time, I'm going to do a snowflake, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, stamp a design in it, because I'd like to kind of see how that would work. I don't think there's enough here to do a snowflake. No, there isn't. Mm, pardon me. So instead of doing a snowflake, we'll do... a couple of these. And there we go. Put this in here and I'm not going to poke holes in these. Or am I? Yeah, might as well. That way I'll have a matching set. Wrap this up. Put that in there. And let's poke some holes. And then I will pause this and put this, put these in the oven.
here we go. All righty. There's my cookie sheet completely full. There we go. Okay, sorry if that made you seasick. <laughs> I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got everything cleaned up. And while we're waiting for the, the salt dough pieces to, um, to cook, bake, whatever you want to say, I wanted to show you um, what I've been working on. Mini stuffed envelopes. This is not my idea. Um, I got this one in Happy Mail. And uh, it's got a little charm on it. This one's got, you know, looks like a little tag, little paper clip. And here there's a, looks like a match with some stuff. And then it's got little, you know, little ephemera and things like that. Anyways. But I'd sat down the other day to see if I couldn't figure one out, you know, how to make them myself. And this is what I came up with. Where's the, there they are. Yeah. Five of them. Oh, there it is. There's the other one. Five of them all together. Now these, I used um, these paper clips. The impression, or this piece right up here, embellishment, I made with um, latex uh, uh, caulking in one of my silicone molds. And then I used E6000 to glue it at the tip of a paper clip. And this one, this is mine. It's got the little book here. It's got the little tag here. It's a little pocket. There we go. And it's got some goodies inside. A couple different goodies. And this is also the first time I've done these. But I thought they were so stinking cute. So I figured I would work on these. I've got this one. And this one. And then I made a couple big ones. Okay, so I figure we could... Um, I could show you what I learned and maybe you'll, you know, decide whether or not it's something you might want to do. All right. Now, oh, okay. Now on the smaller ones, I was trying to remember my um, my measurements, and I keep forgetting what they are. Get my paper cutter out. It's a little bit smaller than the one I was using. So let's see. Yeah, so there's three inches by two and a half inches. Okay. So this is just the outside of the envelope, three and a half by two and a half. All right. Now the two and a half is how tall they are. So the three and a half, let me see. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now how I do this, and there's probably a hundred other ways to do it. All right, you want to pick some coordinating papers, probably... No less than three, I would say. All right. But I just pinch the corner after I fold it in half so I know where the middle is. And then I take each side and fold it up to that middle. 
I'm sure there's a much better way to do this. This is just the way I tried to figure it out because I didn't want to deconstruct the one that was given to me. So I just kind of winged it. All right. So you've got a piece that looks like this. Now this is a really, really light blue. So I wanted a piece to kind of cover up that white. Now this one's going to be very mild. It's not going to be superly, you know, overdone. It's not. Yeah. All right. So it's three inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I got those right. So I need a piece to go in the center that's a little bit less than one and a half. I say that because um, if you do it right dead on one and a half, it, um, it makes it difficult to fold or for the fold. It just kind of tucks it up in there and doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room. Now I'm just doing the top part, the part that's going to be seen. There we go. So just like that. I'm going to take oops, a little bit of glue right along the bottom. You can use glue, tape. I've got glue out, so that's what I'm going to use. Make sure there's not a whole bunch of glue so it's oozing out. Okay, whoops. Hold that down for a minute. <sighs> oh, let go. All right, then these two pieces that are sticking up, all right. You can roll them or fold them back. Now, if you wanted to um, ink the edges, you know, of the top corners, I would probably do that before you glued the bottom, only because. Um, it's a little bit more, not difficult, just, I don't know, you'll see what I mean. Well, I don't want to use brown for that, so let's try some black. Well, I don't want to use my Saison either, so I'll get something else in a minute. Okay, so we've got two different blues here. Okay, I have two more coordinating colors. I like using more than just one color. So, yeah, I'll do that. There we go. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm making a pocket that'll go right across the bottom right here. Okay, and I cut this piece um, one and a half. Uh-oh. My glue is 
oozing out. That's not fun. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the edges because it's a smaller pocket obviously you don't want a whole lot of glue because then you'll end up just gluing the whole thing closed and you won't have a pocket. And you can get ornate or as ornate or detailed or, you know, bling it out, or whatever you want. Mm. It's not supposed to ooze. Alright, so let's see. I've got some tags and stuff I made before, you know, for other projects. You can mix and match. These are a little bit big for me, so I might just trim them down. like I'm skinnier anyway. Alrighty. Tuck that right in there. Tuck it in the top one, which I'll probably stick it in the top one. And put that there, like that. So let's put these aside for a minute. We'll finish up with this one. Okay, so now we've got this here. Now, I don't know how other people do it, because I just can't see a way to get around this. So I just take a piece of clear, clear tape, just to hold those two pieces together. Ugh. My back is hurting me today. Oops. I don't feel like getting up. So I'm going to ink my edges now. Yes, I'm using stays on. It's the closest one I had. I didn't feel like getting up and going and getting my other one. So. See, this is what I mean about wanting to ink your edges before you glue it. And that I forgot, but that's okay. Happy accidents, right? Isn't that what they say? Oh, I love the smell of stays on. <laughs> oh. Alrighty. Actually, I think the purple would work better than the pink. Yeah, let me let me zip out the purple real quick. Yeah, that matches much better. And I probably won't use that one because that one doesn't match. The purple does. So I've got some. Oh, what do you call this stuff? Eyelash trim. Thank you. You can pick this stuff up at the Dollar Tree. Yep, you can get a whole skein of it for a dollar. It's kind of pretty awesome in my opinion. Okay. 
Oh, come on. Let go. There we go. There gives it a little bit of what you call it, but I'm going to do a second face deal. Okay, so we got a little bit of bling. Set this one aside for a moment. Uh, oh, let's see, what else can we add? Aside from that going there, I'm going to go ahead and just probably use regular glue here, but since I got my glue gun out, I'm just going to use it. Oops, that one didn't work. this up just a little bit. Apologize for my momentary whoops. Okay. Let's see which ones do we want to use. Okay, so we've got a purple, which I think I'll use. It kind of goes better with that blue. And a lighter purple. And here's a darker purple. I don't know, I kind of like the darker purple. Shows up a little better. Let's see if I can find the smaller darker purple ones. Or let's see if the blue will work. Well, maybe. Now it's just looking through these to see which colors. Oh. Okay, here's a couple clears. There's a couple purples. Okay, I'm not seeing any of the darker blues or the darker purples in the small pieces. As I've got like small, medium, and large. So we'll put these. aside and pull out some more. Well. 
see, we'd like to find some of these little ones with the blue. I think that would be pretty. You can find the medium ones, just haven't been able to see any of the little ones in the blue. Oops. Oh, there's a blue. There's two little blue ones. Ah. Okay, and then there's a teal. Let's see if we can if we can find a medium sized teal one. That might work too. I'll just kind of peek through it really quickly. One of those. One of the light blue. There we go. Okay, so we've got those, those, and let's see. Oops, determine which colors we like the best. I got a whole bag, um, oh gosh, like a half pound bag full of these half back uh, gems and a happy mail. I was absolutely ecstatic because I didn't have any. And it was really, really a nice gesture. So we'll put that right there for now. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Alrighty. So let's see which ones look better. It's going to be like the light purple right there. Oh, that kind of looks good right there like that. I like that. Let's do that one. Yep, almost looks like a one of those seventies disco shirts. With a hula skirt. That's funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Do we want to use the same colors? Or different colors. Like right up in here. Ah, let's use the same colors. So that's what we've got so far. Put these aside for a minute. Oh, let me grab my needle. Oh, silly, I'm not going to be able to get that one. I did some more um, stamping, but I tried stamping phrases, see if it would work. I already put the other 
cookie sheet in the oven, so I was just going to wait until those were done before I added these. Let's have those set off to the side for a minute. Alrighty. Get me some twine. Alrighty. There's already a hole in this, so I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to go back through the hole, but I'm not going to pull it all the way through. I'm just going to leave a loop, right? Same thing you would do if you had just a piece of um, twine or something that you were going to put on your tag. Here we go. Pull it back through. Uh-oh. I think I did that wrong. I got tangled up. Okay, well, let's untangle this so that I can get it right. Oh, well, fooey, fooey, fooey. Well, that was really classic, wasn't it? I'm not even going to bother untangling it. There. Just cut it all off. And we will try this again. Didn't help that my string had like creases in it. So, again, I'm going to pull it through, leave a tail, hold it down. Go back through the hole, but not all the way through, so we leave the loop. Right there. Take the tail, tuck it through that loop to the back, pull a little bit, take the needle, run it through the same way up top. There we go. There we go. For me, I always try to put a little bitty dab of glue so it holds it in place and then there we go ah that is so funny it still has the kink in it see it I'm wondering if I can get it wet It might if I like got it wet and there we go. Pull that kink right out. Now I have, let's see, there we go, a little tag that I can tuck right here. Now, yeah, that string isn't that glamorous, but it might have been pretty to put some of this in it. But that hole was too little and I didn't want to fart with it. There we go. Now we got to make some things to put in the little pockets. Hmm. So. I could do that. little pieces of graphics and uh, let's see 
this is from that stack of scraps left over when I made that uh, graphics book. You know. So let's see. This one says vintage. Let's go ahead and cut that. Move that out of the way for now. Holy moly, what the heck? That wasn't supposed to do that. Now it works. See, it didn't want to do it that way. All right. That was a brand new, just messed that all up. A brand new um, corner rounder, and I guess you can't do little things with it. <clears throat> Let me grab my other one. Ow, ow, ow. Still from Fiskars. Now I'm going to have to find another. I guess we'll just use this one. See, with this one, it's flat, and I don't have to worry. There. See, now I've got my rounded edges. Okay. This will tuck in here. Turn that off. Tuck that in there. Okay, what else can we put in there? Uh, let me grab my graphics box and I will be right back. Put my lid on my glue real quick. Alrighty, I shall be right back. Okay. Dug some things out. Some of these are way too big, obviously, but they can be trimmed down. Like these, I have no idea. Hmm. That's better. Somebody cut those all wumper jawed. It was probably me. Figure the best way to get even sides. Best way, not. Yeah. Is to semi fold it in half, but not. You know, you don't have to crease it all the way down. But enough to get the top part there. Now they're even, you know, for tags. Hmm, that won't fit. But that'll fit. So let's round the corners on this one. And we're going 
me tuck that in there too. There we go. So we've got some goodies on the inside. Let's make some goodies for the outside. You know, for the outside pocket. Um, hey, did you check in my bathroom? See what it looks like on the wall? No, I'm not here. I had this medicine cabinet that, um, it's like a big plastic thing. And I've been toting it around with me from like the last three houses I lived in because it's perfect. It's the perfect size. It's everything. But it was this cream colored hard plastic that had a wood grain look to it. I wasn't real happy with the wood grain, you know, cream colored plastic. So we moved here, this new place. Um, I bought some uh, spray paint. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but um, it's uh, Rust Oleum made for plastic, metal, that thing. It was a paint and a primer all in one. And we had a couple of warm days. So I took it outside and I spray painted it. And with the wood grain that was built into the plastic, and I spray painted it a dark brown, it's called Kona Brown. And uh, put it back, I actually put it up in the bathroom and it looks fabulous. I like it so much better. See right here. Just tuck that in. Oh. Okay. And probably. Let's see. I don't really want to cut that up. I don't want to put another tag in it. And I don't have baby paper clips. So. Hmm. But you get the idea. You know, just these. Oh, look at this beautiful heart. Let me pull this one out. I wonder if I can just put this heart right in there like that. Oh, I kind of like that. Except it doesn't want to stay. There we go. Alrighty. Uh, give me one second. My computer just told me my battery was low. So I gotta go grab the charger. Be right back. Okay, but I don't like the heart plain. So I'm going to get, oh, that's gold. These are Wink of Stella's, I believe, or the equivalent of. I'm gonna give it a little bit of pizzazz. That uh, looks much better, but I'm also going to pizzazz just the bottom of this. Okay. 
trying to make it match. I'm wondering. Okay, that one didn't look like it. Mm. There we go. And I'm just doing the purple. It's funny how it started off to be blue. You know, using blues. But then the purples just seemed to, to add it. Now while those are drying, I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges of this. It's kind of plain. Kind of get off that white edge. Yeah, that's better. See, and that's dry already. Put the tag in there. And we'll put the heart in the middle. No, nope, heart behind it. I should just heart off to the side. I don't know, I really like that heart there. But I don't want to hide what's there. this over and we will tuck that in right there and there whoops let's see there we go we have a stuffed envelope a mini stuffed envelope that, that is the perfect size to fit down into pocket letter sheets um, or sleeves uh, that type of thing now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take a little bit of blue, just a little bit, because I want the heart to stay on there. Take just a barely a smidgen, and then I'm going to close it and hold it. And you can tuck inside anything you want. You do graphics. You can put a little note, you know, to somebody special. You can put it, fill it with, uh, you know, the small ones of these, these little gems. You pretty much do anything you want. But that was my my take on something that somebody had sent me for Happy Mail, uh, and I'm using up, you know, pieces of scrap paper as well, not just cutting into new ones so on that note I'm going to let you guys go for a little bit uh, I'm just gonna pause my video uh, we've got another hour or so left on the on the salt dough pieces uh, and when those are done I will be back and we will finish those up and then you can see how they turned out just like me <laughs> I'd love to see how they turned out alrighty so I will see you guys in a, in it'll be a blink for you but it'll be about an hour for me so I uh, see you in a minute alrighty I am back and these are done they have come out of the oven 
Now I will say, I would think that maybe go thinner than what I did because this one, see how it puffed up right here? And I'm thinking there was too much, too much dough there for it to stay flat. But it puffed up like, you know, like a cake batter would. But you see how this has got all these rough edges? Because the cookie cutter that I used wasn't sharp enough. It was still kind of dull, so it didn't cut through all of it. So I'm going to take just a regular nail file. And file that down. Let's see. Let's see the difference already from right there to that one. So you can do that, you know, if you want to clean them up, you can do that. See big difference. And it doesn't take much, just a few just a few passes. Just to clean it up around the edges. And I said I do this with my Sculpey molds and things that I, I and that one's all cleaned up. See, lumpy, but it's cleaned up. Okay, but look at that one, one of the stamped edges. I don't know if you can see that very well. You know, and then here's the blue one that we stamped with ink. That one came out really nice. Same with the purple. That one's got a bit of an edge on it, so we'll kind of take that down. There we go. I said the ones I did with the biscuit cutter that were metal have hardly any, same with the, uh, like the leaves, the metal ones, because it was sharper. The, the plastic ones, see, my candy cane kind of got whimper jawed right here. So, actually, I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to use one with a rougher grit. Doesn't take as long. But yeah, so, and then here's that one where I only did a partial. Kind of looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh, and then s snowflakes. Oh, use parchment paper and not wax paper. <laughs> it comes off the sheets a lot easier. But yeah. So, and the glitter that I put on after, it did not stay on. It didn't hold. See, it's just wiping right off. So... You know, unless it's the fine glitter. Like I said, I used the shredded, so there really wasn't anything to hold on to. Hold on to it. But, you know, hey, even the glitter gave it a nice texture. So, put these out of the way for a minute. Clean this up. All right. Now, this is the one I wanted to start with, I believe. So I wanted to try something. Actually, I don't want the silver. I want the bronze. This is like a buff and rub uh, of some sort. But I don't, I don't remember. It's from Artc. From yeah, myartc.com. 
This is a copper. Oh, you see that on the top of that? I believe, I believe, hmm, I'm not even sure what that is. I hope it's not what I think it is. close that up. All right, so let's get us a paintbrush. I'm not sure what kind, but what I want to do, yeah, this is really, really thick. So what I want to do is I'm just going to rub it across the top of the ridges here. to give it an antique look. Also bring up them, some of them ridges that weren't showing, you know, prior. something to my back and I don't know what. So. Hmm. Mm, yep. We're just going to run this around and see how it looks. And then we've got one. That's that one. It smells good. Okay, this is a stencil paint we're going to use, which is also really, really thick. And I think on this one, I'm going to use purple and silver. Since the ink is down in, I'm going to look and see if this will, if I can just do it over the top of it. Give it a little bit of no, oh, it doesn't seem to want to do very much on this one. Well, okay, so that's not going to work. Let's try a regular acrylic. We'll set that one aside. Squirt a little bit in there. Not a lot. Let's use this one. Yeah, I think the acrylic covers and works a lot better.
and this is a metallic purple. So my cat's yelling at me in the background. She hides in the laundry room, which is connected to my bedroom. Okay. And she doesn't come out. She doesn't want any company until I close the door to the laundry room. Then she wants out. And now she's mad at me because I won't let her back in. Oh, I guess I should have thought that, thought that one up a little bit better. <laughs> At least waited until one side dried, right? Alrighty. Cover that up a little bit. See, now that's pretty. This is the one that had the glitter on it, so the top is pretty textured. Oh, let's see. What else do we want to do? Mm. Let's see how it looks with the... with an imprint. I only grabbed a couple paints. I didn't grab a whole lot, you know. I just wanted to see how this worked out. I really didn't intend or plan on it actually working because most of the time when I try something new, I usually screw it up the first time. And then it'll take me some tweaking and some fixing and all of that. Okay, so there's that one. Can't really see it from my computer. I hope you guys can see it. Um, it's got music bars and notes and a an, uh, big one of those things that look like an ampersand. But it's a musical ampersand. What a word, ampersand. I say that ten times fast and still not get it right. Okay, um, this one I don't like, so I'm going to see if I can't rub some of it off. Not a whole lot, but that's okay. Well, there you have it. Let me see. I do remember what I wanted to do, but I'm not going to use that stencil paint to do it. I'm going to have to get some uh, some of the metallic silver. In fact, let me just reach over here and grab it real quick. This is like a champagne, so I want to try one out and see if I can't get it to look like pearlized. <sighs> Let's use this one. Let those dry. Oh, see, now that will be pretty. Mm. 
Alright, there we go. I'm thinking there might just be too much light. That's why. Let's see if that works. That works a little better. Not for me, but my camera's supposed to be regulating that. Okay, there's that one. Let's go ahead and see if we can't fix this one. Now it's covering up some of the purple, but I'm going to go ahead and blot. I can use this to cover up some of the overstamp. Just paint up some of the edges. Now the paint will also seal it some. So and there we go. There's that one. Oops. Okay, take a little bit of water, wipe it out. I use these little medicine dose cups because they're, you know, you can use them over and over and over again and then they're not so expensive that I mean, you can get like a hundred of them or 500 of them for like three bucks on Amazon. Oh, and, um, yeah, I just, I use the same ones over and over again. And when they get too bad, I just throw them out. All right, let's try. And this is gray, not silver, but it's a metallic gray, so I don't know. We'll see, right? We'll do the puffy one. See how it looks. Well, it's a little bit dark for a snowflake. I think we can work with it. And here's why. I'm going to leave the dark, it's called gunmetal gray, but it's metallic. Okay. And I'm not doing a, like a 100% coverage, but I'm getting most of it, if you know what I mean. I mean, there's still like some light spots and stuff like that, but that's okay. Because to be honest, I kind of like that. 
and when it dries I'm going to go over it with a lighter silver and then I'm going to put some glitter on it. And we'll see how that looks. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work and I can throw it out and start over. Or I could just paint over it, you know? That is the beauty of handmade crafts. You can work it and do it any way you want. Almost looks like a starfish, sort of. Not so much a snowflake, but, you know, hey. We'll let that dry. I'm going to wipe that out. Oh, I need to get another roll of paper towels. I will be right back. Alrighty. Okay, so this is just about dry. Okay, I found my silver. found some this is called microfine glitter you can see that it's very very fine it's almost like baby powder fine you see that the company is from Elizabeth craft designs this one's called cool diamond it's a one ounce jar so let's see Uh, the paint booger. Okay. Yeah, see that lightened it up a whole lot. But I knew my silver paint wouldn't give me a whole lot of coverage. But I like the idea of putting that gunmetal gray on the bottom and then putting the silver on top. I think that makes a richer silver. What do you think? All right, and while that is wet, I'm going to get a piece of paper. And I'm just going to sprinkle all over. Now you would think, why do that if you're putting metallic on it? Well, because it's pretty. <laughs> you can never go wrong with glitter. It's just because it's pretty. Alright, now can you see that? It almost looks like diamond sparkling. You didn't have that before with just the silver metallic. So I believe that is really pretty. And when it dries, totally, I'll flip it over and do the other side, and that would make a really pretty Christmas ornament. You can maybe put, you know, little gems on the outside. In fact, that's probably what we'll do. Let me open this back up. I 
glue gun. This is still on. Alrighty, and I have this little baggie, so instead of digging out the other, I'll just use this. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Let's get five of them. There's one. Two, three, four, five. What is that? That's kind of a work looking one, so we'll get a different one. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. one's dry on the other side so I want to get this purple paint used before it goes bad. Kitty purry! Kitty kitty! Like I said, this is my first time doing this, so I may do it wrong. I may not do it, you know, as elegantly as some do. But at the same time, I think this would be a fabulous idea to do with your kids or your grandkids around the holidays. Or even, you know, like I said, for somebody's birthday or for Valentine's Day and all of that. I got a little bit of paint left, so... Go ahead and paint what I can on the back. There we go. A little bit left. And we're done with those. And while we finished that up, gave the silver and the glitter a chance to to dry. There we go. Let me see. Yep, that's all dry. So, let's do the back and let that dry before I add the little gems. Wow, this little paintbrush is getting a workout, isn't it? let that dry. While that's drying, I will do the Christmas tree. Now, I didn't know if acrylic would work better. I got this metallic Christmas green or this glitter paint because I don't know if it just paints clear with green glitter or if it's green with glitter in it. So, I'm going to see. But this is also tempura, so it's like washable paint. I'm just going to stick a blob in it. Let's see what it looks like. And if I don't like it, I'll cover it with the acrylic. Yeah, see, I don't like that. Because you can kind of see, well, maybe. Almost looks like candy. 
Well, we'll see what it looks like when it dries. I mean, it's very, very faint. But it almost looks like hard candy when it's wet. So we'll see it when it dries. Yeah, my cat is losing her mind. Oh. Get the sides. And honestly, that might be too faint for me. But that's okay. Yeah, that's just kind of like a faint. Can't even really see any glitter in it. Now on the candy cane. Oh, that one's not been opened yet. Let me go get the one that's open. I'll be right back. Okay. Now this one. Probably not the best way to do that, but for all intents and purposes... Way too much paint, but that's okay. It's easier to paint the red over the white, you know, to make the stripes than it is the white over the red because the red would show through so badly. This is such a strong color. And this will probably take two coats of white. My white for some reason, maybe it's old, but I don't think so, because usually when acrylic paint gets old, it gets sticky and stiff. Not this. For some reason, my white seems to be really thin. So, I'll let that set for a minute. Oh, well that wasn't fun. I'm just spraying my hand over my garbage can to get the majority of the uh, excess paint off. Oh, but yeah, this is the fun. Go ahead and just do that. That we've had so far with the um, salt dough. Mm. Uh-oh, hold on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I hate when that happens. <clears throat> Didn't even have time to go running in the other room. 
So let's try these. I guess I should shake it up first, huh? That might help. And you know, if you wanted, you can just leave these plain and have like a natural Christmas, you know, without any fanfare or anything like that. How pretty is that? And you can go over it with more than just one color. Give it some dimension. There you go. Let's see, has this dried? Yeah, for the most part it has. Where's my silver? Where did the silver go? It's got to be right in front of my face. Because I just had it. Oh my god. Oh, there it is. I knew I had it somewhere. And this almost looks like um, an old-fashioned cast iron with the way this um, two-tone paint came out. It was pretty daggum cool. Okay. And while that is still wet, you're going to do the other side. See, and this, they call this diamond dust. And I love this stuff. And you, gosh, you really don't need a lot. You don't. I've had this thing for two years, and look, it's almost still brand new. Now, granted, I don't use it every single day, but you know what I mean. And there we go. See? Doesn't that kind of look like it's cast iron? That's pretty dang cool. Pretty daggum cool. I'm going to set that off to the side. I'm not going to put that back in there. That's still a little wet. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go well actually first off it's still a little wet but let's do this before we sign off just so you can kind of get an idea of how it would look with the gems Quick. <laughs> 
try to do it before the glue dries. And there we go. Let me grab something to put through. Since the hole is big enough, I'm going to go ahead and use what I was using for the There we go. Where's my scissors? And there you have it. Whoops! Ha ha ha! That didn't die. Not for smirts. Not for smirts. Okay, where's the other end? There we go. That did not go through for smirts. Sorry about that. It works much better if the knot holds, right? I guess I probably should have done something that wasn't so daggone fuzzy. But it was what I had on my desk, so. You get the general idea, right? And there. Okay. And there we go. I can probably put a fat one in the middle. Let me see. I think I'm going to do that because I like that idea. Not a big, big, big one. But maybe a medium-sized one and then I'll be done. <laughs> There. Now I'm done. See how pretty that is? So, a little bit longer video than, than I try, but you know, hey, learn something new every day, right? I want you everybody have a great day. God bless. Remember, always, always, always find the humor in life, because if you don't, life sucks. And Give yourself the freedom to craft yourself silly. All right. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell if you want notifications when I send a new video. And I hope to see you again. Bye.